Hi, Phyllis. Depending on where you are in the world, good morning or good evening. Welcome back. My name is Goma Marie Conde. And if you're new to the village, this is a place where we provide resources for all your marriage and all of your family needs. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm excited to have you here with us. First thing first, please like, comment, subscribe, share the video with others so that they will be able to get uh, helpful information as well. And hit the notification button so that when a new video is out, you'll be able to get it and watch it. Thank you again for doing all of that and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that has been high on my demand list. People have been asking for it forever and I am more than happy to talk about it today. It's actually the first question I get once I share with people what I do for a living. They usually ask me, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm a marriage and family therapist. I work predominantly with couples. I work with the family system, but most of my client load happens to be couple. The next thing is, why do people cheat? So today we're going to talk about why people cheat. Um, I, also, I really want to stress that this is a very sensitive topic. Okay, so I'm not taking it lightly. Uh, I'm not going to be explaining because I think that affairs are right. I'm just giving you the scientific data that I have and the experiential data that I have. Because as a therapist, I get to see daily what couples struggle with. So why people cheat? The first thing I want to say is there are myriad of reasons why people cheat. There's not one reason why people cheat. People cheat in every country. People cheat in every culture and just about every creed. So now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to give you some data here because I love to give the research. It's really important. One thing you will learn about me on this channel is I don't want to just tell you this is what I think. This is how I feel. Uh, but I want to be able to share with you what the research is, what my experience is as a therapist, and then what the Bible says, because I do come from all of those theoretical orientations. Okay, I like the biblical principles, the scientific um, uh, information, and as well as using the counseling theories. So the data uh, from the Census Bureau, and this is recorded on the Hives Law uh, page, and Hives Law is a firm that specializes in divorce, etc. Um, they're not sponsoring this video, but I think it's important to give what we call uh, credit for intellectual property. So according to them, this information getting from the Census Bureau, it says that infidelity is the second reason couples report for divorce. 88 Point eight percent of couples report infidelity as the reason why they're getting a divorce. It comes second to lack of commitment. That's 94.4%, which they kind of, you know, interlock anyway. Lack of commitment, infidelity. Um, so 88.8% of people report that the reason they are filing for divorce is because of infidelity. Many of them consider it the final straw. That's what ended the marriage. Now, there is an organization called the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. This is an organization that I fall under. And from the AAMFT, one of the reasons, the primary reason for affairs is low self-esteem or personal dissatisfaction. And I tell people this all the time, that based on my experience as a therapist, this is really has been showing up to be true, even in my practice, that when you dig deep with someone who has had an affair, most times there is a lack, right? A lack of feeling good about self. And because I don't feel good about myself, I think that another person is responsible for what I feel. So then I go out and I act on it, thinking I'm punishing that person. 
but it really comes back to me because it, it really falls on me not feeling good about myself. So low self-esteem is up there on the reason why people cheat. The other one is cultural acceptance. Some cultures normalize affairs. If you grow up in a culture where you see your elders having affairs, you see it just really being accepted in society, you don't view it as a problem. You don't see it as something that is bad, that's unacceptable. So what do you do? You fall right in line and you do the same thing. The other one is prolonged imbalance of give and take in the marriage, meaning you don't have a mutual relationship. One person is pouring out praises and affection and forgiveness, and they're doing all of these things that are required to keep a marriage healthy, and the other person is giving bare minimum. So you don't have a balance. And when this is happening for a long time, somebody gets tired and somebody now turns outside because other people become attractive. They're like, what can I get from this other person? I'm missing something. Another one is mis midlife crisis. People go through midlife crisis. Sometimes, you know, you reach to your 30s and your 40s and your hormone um, level is changing in your body and maybe you start to gain weight or you start to get extra facial hair or, you know, you start to get skin discoloration and all of these things that happen to us when we're having uh, imbalances in, in our hormones. And sometimes we're thrown off and now we start to doubt ourselves. So then I go back again to that self-esteem issue right? So I don't feel good about myself. I'm thinking what's wrong with me. I'm gaining weight. I don't feel attractive. And most times it's really to myself because my spouse may not find me unattractive. But if that's how I feel, that's how I feel. And that might be another reason why people cheat. People sometimes feel the need to escape, right? They feel trapped. And sometimes you have this with people who marry very young and, you know, feel as if they were not quite ready for marriage, not prepared, having experienced life or explored enough. And so they get married and now they feel trapped. And all of a sudden, they're trying to figure out what is out there for me. Sexual addiction is another reason you have affairs. Uh, sexual addiction is really the idea of looking for a high um, and a way to release sexual orgasm. You know, it, that's what it provides for them. It's this high that they get. Um, and this anxiety that they get and then after this release that's when they have the regret but um, a lot of times it's a lack of impulse control so hence they go out and they have affairs sometimes multiple affairs and then you have what we call love and romance addicts right these people are driven by passion it's all about passion you know you can't turn up the heat enough in the marriage for them you have to keep giving more and keep giving more. And sometimes that's linked to, to pornography use because we know that a, a, a regular functioning person cannot compete with what we see in a pornographic movies, etc. So except you're a porn star, that's not what you do on a daily basis. You have other things that are important to you. So sometimes it is fueled by that. Another one is what we call the fantasy or flight affairs. It's almost like you're running to find out what is missing. Something must be missing in this marriage. So you're looking for that fantasy and so, or um, you're fleeing to find the fantasy. So you have the fantasy of flight uh, experience. Now, there are uh, different traits that you tend to have more affairs in. And so I'm just going to go over some of those. This hotline called the investigation hotline um, is one of the ones where they investigate, you know, people who are in the sex industry. And so they interview these people. And what they have found that the number one profession for infidelity is the trade profession where you have uh, plumbers or electricians, etc. And you have more males who are having affairs in this particular uh, profession. The second one is the medical profession. And in this profession, what they really found is that it's mostly females who cheat, like the doctors and the nurses. You have 23% of them who have affairs. And for the trade profession that we talked about earlier, you have 29% of those who have affairs. And next one is uh, uh, happens to be entrepreneurs. You have 11% of females 
who are having affairs and 11% of male. So you have an even number there of uh, people having affairs. Then the information technology field, IT, 12% uh, of men, 8% of women report having affairs in that field. And the last one on the list here is uh, retail and hosp hospitality. You have 9% females, 8% uh, of males who report having affairs in in that particular profession. So you see, you know, now we could say, why are they cheating in these particular professions? Is it that the stress level is high? Is it that they're aware a lot? What we do know scientifically is that proximity is actually one of the, re one of the uh, predictor of romantic relationship, right? So if I'm close to someone for a very long time, and especially if I'm having intimate discussions with this person, which is why you have what we call emotional affairs, and that will be for another video. But when you talk about emotional affairs, that's where you find that taking place. I'm sharing with you my thoughts, my fears, all of these things that are important that I should be sharing with my spouse. I'm now talking about them freely with you without giving a second thought. And the next thing you look, we are elevating this relationship to something that is completely unhealthy. So that could be part of the reason why. When it comes to entrepreneurs, one of what the research is saying is that it's probably because of power. And that's why you have this even number, 11% of women, 11% of men having affairs who are, who are entrepreneurs. And so they're saying maybe it's because both of them in this case feel powerful and feel like they can do whatever they want, uh, you know, when they want to. Um, so this is really what it is when it comes to affairs. It's not that people are bad. So I think you see it now based on the information, the data, the research, the science. It's not that people are bad and that's why they're cheating. It's really because most of it is because people have low self-esteem. They're struggling with not being satisfied with self. And so they keep searching for something outside of self uh, to feel better, to feel worthy, to feel as if they belong. And something that I have found in practice is that lack of friendship in the relationship really opens the door for other people to become attractive to your spouse. So when you have, you know, couples who get married, and especially when they are young, and your spouse comes to you to share something that is personal, you criticize your spouse, you shut them down, you shut him or her down, you dismiss him or her, you don't really listen, you become so critical that that person completely withdraws the information. Chances are they're not going to come back to share with you again. They're going to turn to other people to share the deepest, darkest secrets with. Or another thing that happens, and I observe this a lot, sometimes even with mature or older people, um, you will have where your spouse is listening to you and you're discussing everybody on the planet. You're critical of everybody, what this person is doing, what that person is doing, what kind of life they're living. And you really spend hours talking about other people. Your spouse is most likely listening to you and thinking, I cannot share a thing with this person. I can't. Or your significant other is thinking, this is not somebody who I want to even get married to because this is all they're going to do. And I cannot be free with this person in sharing my own problems because they're going to discuss me with other people. So we have to be really mindful and we have to be able to create a safe space for our spouse to be able to share with us whatever is burdensome um, for him or for her. I will tell you that the couples who I've worked with over the years who have worked on cultivating friendship or healthy friendship where they talk about most things and they're able to be honest and open with each other and just be raw and be vulnerable, they tend to have a healthier marriage and you tend to have minimum uh, issues with affairs. So really cultivating healthy friendships. And I will do a video where I talk about the ways that you can cultivate friendship in a relationship. But it's really what it is. This is the science. This is the research. This is why you have affairs. Affairs happen when people feel lonely. Not lonely because someone is making them lonely in the marriage. But lonely because maybe they're lonely with themselves. Their own thoughts. They cannot share enough. They don't feel confident in self. Self-esteem is low. So they tend to keep seeking that thrill, something that will make them feel important. All right. 
hopefully you found this video helpful and like every other video i want to say thank you for watching from wherever you are in the world thank you for watching and taking the time again please share comment subscribe hit the notification button uh talk to people about what you learned here today talk to your spouse for me that's even more important and i just want to pray with you as i do in all my videos so let us pray may god bless your home may god keep your home safe may your marriage be saturated in unconditional love and forgiveness may you all experience true friendship may your children be blessed and if you don't have children may your home be blessed in jesus name amen